Hey, what's up everyone? This is Peter L. Newton, and today we're going to be working on Movement Mechanics and Unreal Engine 4. So as you can see here, I have Sanctuary loaded up, and uh, I've been playing with the level a little bit. I've turned these BSP into static meshes, and this has been quite some fun, trying to just try out the mechanics myself, and play test it of course over and over and just getting it just how I like it and so I hope you guys like this today so let's get started you have no work needed on your side all you need to do is download the shooter game template from Unreal Engine's launcher and you'll be given everything you need to do this tutorial so as you can see there's a player pawn and this pretty much has everything I've done so far and there's actually a weird glitch and so now I basically have to start from scratch just like you to recreate all this and so now I have a blink player pawn just as you do and so we're gonna start from the beginning the first thing we're gonna do we uh, pull these out put over here. The first thing we're going to do is see these variables right here. These basically it's just creating a count system for my other cooldowns and different checks. So you can see it's just a tick. It takes at one second over frames because ticks are frames and then it adds that to the current time and then sets that. So it just continually adds a second. And so for things, uh, the charge, once it charges for, let's say, 1.5 seconds, then you reach the maximum amount of jump you're going to get from that charge, and it launches you in the air. Now, I use this a lot as far as uh, the counting across the whole system. And so to just define it and create it right here made it easier to use. So we're going to first start off by creating these event binds. These will allow me to continually use event on land and event tick throughout the course. So let's go here. We want to create event dispatchers right here. Call it event. Let's go back custom event on land. I'm going to create one more event dispatcher. I'm going to call this custom tick. Now the difference between events and event dispatchers. Events can be called within the class. They can also be called outside of this class, but it can only be bounded to one event. Event dispatchers can be bind can be binded to multiple events. So let me just show you what I mean by that. I call this once. And then this is bound to a lot of different events. And those are all called exactly when this is called. With the regular events, you can only bind it to one event. So can only, you would have to essentially recreate the event over and over and have to call it over and over. And in a sense, that could create a sort of latency well, this is immediate. And so that's it. Yeah, let's create some event online and event text. And so the first part we're going to create here is what I talked about earlier, which will create the current time over time. And we're going to call this event custom tick. So let's go to add event. And we're going to find our event called custom tick. And we got sign custom tick. So this would be far out over here, where it can be bound to this on play. But we're just going to use it for now. And we have to add in one, actually two, no, actually one parameter to this. And this will be a float. 
and we'll call this delta seconds. And let's call begin. So I got a new keyboard here, so it's a, a little different. Whatever, I, I lost my other one on the on the flight here. Let's see begin. Actually, go. I'm gonna call tick as well, and then we're gonna call this a bit. So right here, delta seconds out the seconds and so this tick is gonna call the event and it's gonna return the parameter delta seconds so you may notice it did not update this just try and delete this because if you actually try to use that it will not work it will say that this parameter does not exist so let's assign on tick and let's call this custom tick one so this go over here and this will go to event begin play which will bind it right when the uh, game begins and so what we want to do now is multiply that by one you want to create a variable float variable and add that to itself and then set that to continually update it. So we're going to create a new variable called current time with float. Now we want to set this, but you also want to get this. So let's multiply this delta seconds by one. And you notice actually typo there let's uh, see if we can just update this second enter save compile update no you see what happens yeah um, let's just recreate that really quick assign custom tick put that over here Put this back down here. Pick that. Call custom tick. Dot to seconds. Bam. All right. So we're gonna multiply this by one, and then we're gonna add this. And then now this is gonna update the new current time. So it's going to update current time with the new uh, time. And it's going to do this every frame. Continually update the time. So let's comment this and put at seconds over time. Actually, I should say over frames. So next we have to do is double jump with charge. Now, when I make these systems, I also make them work with each other. So feel free to dissect and only use pieces of these, but today we're gonna have everything work together. And so let's delete this, because it doesn't really matter now. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Double jump with charge. I'm going to start off with the action jump. I'm going to set charge to jump. I'm going to also create another variable called enable while running. So we're not. Delete that. Do, 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 do. All right, all right, cool. Let's get in ready some garbage. So we're going to start off with event jump, set the charge, retrievable delay so we can't spam it and then we also want to send that charge and then they will do the update 
And so what's basically happening is it says can it can it charge? It does the delay minus is if the delay is minus the current time is true. Once it does that, there's a retriggerable delay to keep you from spamming the key. But it also checks if you're walking at that time. It says, okay, can send charge, and then it updates that. Once you release, it says you can't charge anymore. It checks if it can send the charge now that you've released the button. Goes over, and it launches the character. Then it sends charge off, and then also adds that delay. That delay that happens, wait, well, the check that happens here. Oh. Yeah, the delay that happens here. And so what happens if you can't send the charge? Well, that simply means that you're not trying to charge, you're trying to double jump. And so it goes through here, it returns false instead, and it does the traditional double jump. And so it says, can, is there a charge delay? false okay well launch and that's assuming that you've already you already jumped in the air and you want that extra jump but let's say you didn't do that and you spammed it it's gonna go true and it's gonna do the traditional single jump and then it'll do the traditional second jump from that point and these will all use the same jump velocity which is to jump z velocity it will, add, it will immediately add that to your z override and make sure you check that because say you have uh, no velocity and you're actually going down if you try to add the z velocity without overriding it it will only take out part of the current z velocity and essentially just slow it down but if you override it it replaces it and makes it a positive jump z velocity allowing you to be pushed back up and so let's work on this now we're going to create two new variables charge jump current we're also going to have to create charge jump boolean and we're gonna to have to create send charge. Lastly, we will create charge cooldown, but also update that. All right, let's just go to the player pond. I'm gonna create charge delay current. Actually, just charge delay. We call it, we create charge delay and update and charge cooldown. So we've got three. Charge delay. Charge cooldown. And charge update. Update that. Just so there's some type of organization here. You really could do charge. If you want to create categories, you can put those in charge category. Charge jump, I should say. Change this at jump. Oh, let's do that. Do that. There you go. You got a little bit more organization there. And there's charge jump. And there's send charge. And it's the only two booleans here. So let's create those two. Charge jump. Send charge. Now I've already broken into the habit of clicking this, but you can also right click here in the empty space. I can do it. And you hit add variable, add function, macro, graph, event dispatcher. 
can also do enum as it. So she send charge. Change category, charge jump, charge jump. Now to check if these have some default values, they do not. Current, of course, does not. Current is current time in the other graph. Not to confuse you, but that's what it is. And charge cooldown, of course, is 1.5. And you could change that however you feel you want. As I said, for me, it's a 1.5 cooldown. So compile so they can access the default values and apply. And send charge, of course default off charge jump default off so let's create this charge jump delay and current time is it less than that so let's create jump oh let's create jump action Then we're going to do set charge jump. And we're going to do is charge delay less than current time, meaning the time has passed the delay. So charge delay. So less than current time. And this will be the defining attribute. Because if this is in current delay, we don't have to create a huge check and have to do false, negative, uh, whatever. You just want to be able to call this and then set that, and it will do the rest accordingly because it won't send a charge without that. So we need to do retriggerable delay so that we know if you're spamming jump to do a double jump or you're attempting to actually charge. And then we're gonna do a check and get the character movement, character movement mode, and make sure that you're walking at that time. And then we're gonna add these two together if you can charge jump, but then are you also walking or in a walking state, meaning you're on the ground and not flying or anything of that case then you can send the charge all right so let's go here we want to get character movement when you get the mode and then we want to do equal and walking next we want to do charge jump which is this value over here you want to make sure that you have not released setting it to false so get charge jump and we're going to create an end function and this will make sure that both the both of these return true and then we're going to create a branch Right up to here, we have to do re-triggerable delay, which we will set at 0.5 seconds. Considering how fast you hit keys, 0.5 seconds is a pretty slow delay. So that allows you to double jump easily and freely without the worry of charging or whatever the case. Next we want to do is send charge. So we want to go in here, set this to true. Next, we want to update the time and add 1.5 seconds. So update that. Next, update. So set. And we want to here get float actually let's do this all right get current 
time add float 1.5 or you could do the quote down which is 1.5 throw that there Ooh, auto save you saved my life so many times I couldn't even count Ooh. no it, it really does uh, swell drop Let's go with that swell um you see all this craziness this is what we got to do next to determine the jump so what's happening now that we finish this branch we want to continue on and create the release branch this is where the actual ha ah, this is where the action happens this is simply the preliminary logic and so now we want to go in here set charge jump to false Next, you want to do send charge, and it gets past this point. In this here, we're talking specifically about the double jump. Ah, I mean the charge jump. Charge jump. So true, and we immediately skip all this, as you can see, and go here. And that's where the charge jump happens. So we're going to do that first step first. First step first. Go here, and we're going to do launch character. Now I'm sure there's a better way to do this, but this is what I did this time around. So I get the jump velocity because I don't like creating too many variables like I have. So let's get the jump Z velocity. And plus a double jump would actually mean a double jump. You wouldn't actually be able to jump higher the second time. You would just jump again. And you, you want to make it seem like you're jumping from that level in a sense. Uh, so let's do current time minus update at, which will give us the times that have passed, the time that has passed, I should say. Um, get update at. And we want to subtract that from current time. Subtract. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we want to do abs just so we make sure that we get positive value. Because this can be less than this, which will result in a negative value. And I don't want to do the opposite way, because I'm cool like that. And we want to divide it by 1.5 and then multiply that by the value that we want returned. And so, to simply put it, we're just getting the percentage of what it we're just getting the percentage of how uh, how far along it is so it says one second one divided by 1.5 you know, let's pop open google real quick if you want one divided by 1.5 would give us 0.66 percent then you multiply that by say 600 which is the feet you want to jump and so you've jumped for you held for one second out of the 1.5 maximum seconds multiplied by the jump height you want to get which will result in only getting 400 of that 600 so that's some elementary math for you it's about as far as I go with that so uh, yeah let's do negative, I mean, I divide by 1.5, and then we're going to multiply this by this value. So let's get this. Multiply this by 1.5. Ooh, that's not what I wanted. Do 
multiply 1.5, multiply this, and it's keyboard 1.5, and we're just getting the minimum and maximum jump height for this, essentially. And we want to sub we want to multiply this, the results of this by the result of what's left. So divide. 1.5 and then we want to multiply and stickler about where these pens are connected so we get to do that next we got to do see where you see what's happening here see what's happening so we want to multiply this to get how much they should receive and then we also want to subtract that from the maximum they could receive and then clamp that and return that to charge so say if they land is say they held for longer than 1.5 seconds you want to clamp it at the maximum of this return but if they held less you want to limit it to this but it could be somewhere in between So we want to minus this from the maximum return. And since this will more than likely be the smaller number, I want to just go ahead and make that it. And then we want to clamp. And then this is what will be returned. So let's pull this out so this a little slightly more visible what's going on. And so we want to do current time. Let's pull this over here. So determine which one we want. We want to get the value from the math we just did above, calculating how much time they held and how much they should get in return. Then we want to get the min, which is this value here, and the max, which is this value here, and then return that to a select float. So let's go select float, and this select float is basically determining if they held out longer than uh, the delay. And so let's look at that now. There's see when it should it update it at. Basically, when when has it passed? When has it passed 1.5 seconds? Is that less than the current time? If it is, if it's less, if it's less than the current time, yeah. Let's just go ahead and. Time. Want to do current time? Current. Yeah. All right. So let's do at at current time. Bottom. Da da da. And yeah. So for less than current time, we're gonna get the max value. If current time is more than this, meaning it hasn't passed. We want to get what they accumulated thus far. So here, here, and then we want to create a vector and add that to the Z and launch them. Launch them into space. Make a vector. Add that to the Z. See why it's stretched all the way out here? It wasn't for aesthetic reasons. It was just so I didn't have to have spaghetti strings flutter across my fields. And then we want to set charge to false and then put the charge delay on there. So you can uh, do that after 1.5 seconds. More than likely, after that jump, you will not be on the ground after 1.5 seconds. So you can pretty much reuse it immediately. Isn't that cool? Yeah. I mean, you can always increase it if you want to. So uh, feel free. And set charge delay. 
set. And this is for aesthetic reasons. I don't want to use any more space than I have to. So let's charge that to the cooldown and we're good. And you see me abusing, constantly abusing this current time array. I mean, current time float variable because it just makes life easier not having to use it over, I mean, uh, remake it over and over. Just make it a global variable that I can keep calling to. Yeah, that's uh, a poor man's timer in a sense. And so I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna create the second branch of this charge. If it doesn't need to send charge, meaning they're just trying to jump and then jump again, aka the classic double jump, then we want to check just to make sure because if they're not if they're on the ground I mean if they're not on the ground then it's possible that they've been sent into a charge jump meaning they're high in the air but say they want to jump again well since they haven't landed then there's a chance that they won't be able to double jump so I create this backup right here that calls on that same check delay, I mean that charge delay. And that's what we're gonna do right here for the false return. We're gonna do branch. And let's see when you branch follows a check. Okay, two months. We need that top first to continue on the charge jump. So do once and we're going to get that same value essentially for that double jump. And let's do a launch character here. Click that, and then you want you see that from here, which will be simply the Z jump of this, which we'll use again. Let's make a vector. Break that, get the Z, Z velocity, pick it to this, override Z, there you go. Now, say it's true, and they're just trying to do the lazy O double jump, and not trying to deal with this whole catastrophe up here. Well, let's do my double jump, which is super simple. I must say, and we're gonna go over here. I'm gonna do n. I'm gonna do numbers. Yeah, I'm gonna check. We can do it twice, and we're gonna do it on a switch so that we can do once for regular jump, and then second for that double jump. So go here, switch. I should do it here. Switch. Pick here. Let's add. Start the next will be one. That's no default. Add pen. Add pen. One and two. Notice how I refine things all the time. It's cool. It still works. Now we're going to do the launch. And then we're going to get the Z velocity from this same by. I'm going to overwrite the Z, and that'll be it. This printing is just for debug testing. And so now another event we have to, <coughs> another event we have to get in is event on landed. So let's go over here, and we're going to sign Sign. I know it's about sign. 
right there. I'm gonna pick that here. And really, I should have hit results, but I don't use it in this tutorial ever. So it's not really that useful. So I'm not gonna use it. I'm gonna go here and go to sequence so we can send this off to two different things. One will be for this do once, and the other will be for this do numbers, which we have to set to two. And it'll only switch and check for one, and check for two. It starts at zero, go check for one, and then check for two. And uh, that's it. Let's go try this out in game. All right, save. Let's comment this. Do do do. Double jump with charge. Yeah, we in the hood now. We fancy. We get fancy. All right, that's all there. Looks good. Let's double check this. Double jump. You guys like that? I like it. Come on. One. Oh, wow. You see that? Oh, something happened. I can't. I can't jump again. I wonder why. Anyone know why? I don't know why. The answer is simple. I never call event on landed. So event on landed. Now we want to call custom event on land. It should be landed, but you know, I'm not gonna complain. Who's complaining? Works. Yeah. Play. Okay, let's try this one. Hold spacebar. Yeah. And so let's check that out one more time. And here, you can see that this is being multiplied by 1.5. Essentially, let's check what that would be. So let's say it's about 600 now, or just 1.5. Come on, Google. I love you. All right. It would be 900 would be the maximum jump you get from that. So it's a little bit higher. Just go over here. And you can see my normal jump is a little higher than this. Now my charge jump. One, two. So let's see. But now I can hold that charge jump again. But also do that second jump. So, see? All right.